Good morning, Harefield. Welcome. Welcome to our Sunday morning meeting of Harefield Church. And uh, we just we just bless you. And my prayer this morning, Father God, just come and pour your spirit upon us as we just look at the next stage in our series this morning. We just ask this in your name. Amen. We are moving on into the next part in our series, Saved to Grow. And today I'm looking at meat. No, not the kind of meat that you eat. Um, meeting together. We're looking at the, the meeting together. We've, I believe, become sort of complacent to the blessings that we have in our nation. The, we take privileges, the privileges of being church in our nation. We've, we've sort of started to take them a little for granted, I believe. I, I think I have. When I look in my heart, I take things for granted. Last week, John, in his word to us, when he was preaching to us, he, he was talking about the Word, the Word of God. And he mentioned that there were those that had, um, where they didn't have the Word, they didn't have the Bible and um, even talked about some from our very church here, from Harefield Church, who got involved with going out to other nations and handing out Bibles to people who, who, didn't, who couldn't get hold of them um, because the regimes in which they lived uh, wouldn't allow it and, and because of persecution. And even myself, I, I spent um, a number of years back now, but um, it was a little while after the Berlin Wall came down and, and Russia had started to open up a little bit. And a number of pastors, um, and I was one of them, got together and we went over to Russia for 10 days uh, to go and meet up with pastors from, from different churches there and, and have a, a 10 day uh, pastor's school, basically. Um, and, and in that time, we went out and we went out from, we were based in Moscow. It was minus 31. I mean, really cold, but actually quite amazing. I mean, it, that was, that was quite, quite good. But the thing that stuck with me from that is actually the fact that. I just felt so humbled. I was going over to Russia to these pastors. I was going to start preaching to them and I was bringing teaching to these guys and yet they'd been going through persecution. Some of them had spent quite a lot of time in prison and um, for the Lord and, and they'd been arrested, sometimes right in the middle of preaching and stuff like that. And yet they were coming and they were hungry and they were listening and we were preaching and teaching. And, and the other thing that, that struck me was how easy it was for God to move. Um, when we went out over the weekend and we preached in, in churches around that area, so we went out from Moscow to the outlying villages and that, and the churches would come together. And you would preach and then you'd say, shall I pray? And everybody would be down the front and people would be getting healed. People would be seeing, backs would be being made better. All sorts of things were going on. And it was just amazing and how simple it all was. But the, the, the overriding sense was the, the humbling sense that, that God ministered to them. They'd had experiences that I'd never had. And yet I was able to share and bring some, some teaching to them. And I, that was just an, an amazing time. But I do think that what happens is that in this country, because for a long time we've not had to be careful. I know, I know there are some areas with work and that where we, we need to be sort of careful and, and, and aware of what's going on. But generally speaking, we haven't had for many years persecution of the church in this nation. For many years, we've been able to preach the gospel. We've been able to share our faith. We've been able to stand on the street corners. We've even been able to have open air services and all that sort of thing for many, many years. And I think the danger is that we then see this as a right rather than a privilege. And actually, if you listen to what we see um, around the, the, the human rights and, and you know, religious rights uh, uh, and racial rights and all those sorts of things, and religious rights is one of those things, and there is a sense in which we almost expect it to be a right that we can preach the gospel and, and, and share the truth of God. And I think that we need to recognize that actually that's a blessing. That's a blessing and a privilege that God is giving us at the moment because those in power at any time could change things. Things could get changed. It could become more difficult 
And we've seen that even around the world, even right now, there are places where people can't meet because of where they live. That is until now, until COVID. And suddenly, we are feeling constrained. Suddenly, some of those freedoms have been curtailed. And we're living with that. We're living with that and we're working with that. And this morning, through seeing God's purposes for us and, and really considering our privileged place in Christ and what he's done for us and who we are in him and, and looking at the blessings that we get when we do meet, what I want us to do really this morning is I want us to be inspired, encouraged, and I want us to really seek God to find ways where we can meet together. I used the term, welcome to our meeting this morning, quite, quite deliberately, because this is a meeting. I know that, that we play this back on a Sunday morning, but you could be listening to this on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. You may not even be listening to it this coming week. You may not be listening to it next week. You may be listening to it a month down the line. But we are still meeting and it can be a meeting, and I believe that the Holy Spirit can work through that, and the Holy Spirit does work through that. And I think what we need to do is allow God to inspire us and encourage us to find ways to meet, to find new ways of doing church and meeting together, but also of making the most of every single opportunity that we do have. When there are changes that are positive, when there are changes that give us opportunities, to take those opportunities. And so really this morning, my, my, my purpose is to, to just really encourage us in meeting together. I mean, I could just say, the Bible says we ought to meet together and it's a good thing to do and it's sensible to do. So let's not give up meeting together. Okay, that's sort of what I'm going to say. That's sort of summed up what I'm going to say this morning. But what I want to do is for us to be encouraged and inspired and, and set on fire and, and just a, a burning desire to be stirred in our hearts again. Because I think, even for me, being in this lockdown, being cut off from people, you sort of get used to being separated. And I don't believe that that's what God's got for us. So the first thought that I have on this is that meeting together... Being church together, meeting together, is part of our created purpose. What do I mean? Come with me to Genesis, Genesis 2, 15 to 22. And it's a story that a lot of us know. It's the creation story. And in there we see, it says this, The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So the Lord God formed the ground from the ground formed from the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them and the man chose a name for each one he gave names to all the livestock all the birds of the sky and all the wild animals but still there was no helper just right for him so the lord god caused the man to fall into a deep sleep and while the man slept the lord god took out one of the man's ribs and then closed up the opening and then the lord god made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. What a story. We see that story about the creation of, of, of mankind, and we see the story of how womankind came into being and, and how God brought both man and woman together. And so often we read that scripture, that verse 18, and then the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. You know, I've, I've, I must admit, I've, so often I read that and I just think of it in the context of male and female. I think of it in the context of marriage uh, and that whole sort of scenario. And, and yes, we, we just assume that what God is saying is that Adam's being alone isn't good for Adam. But I was reading um, one commentator, and another, another speaker, another preacher on this, and I found that... He said this, what if, 
what God is saying here was that Adam's being alone isn't good for God. And I thought that's, that's quite a, a challenge. And I just thought, wow, what does he mean? Think about this for the moment. God created everything perfect. He made everything perfect. And then he looks at his creation and he says, it is not good for Adam to be alone. He just says it is not good for Adam to be alone. He, he doesn't say it's not good for Adam for Adam to be alone. He said it's not good for the man to be alone. It could be saying that from God's perspective, it isn't good for man to be alone. Why? Well, the writer who had this thought and, and put it before me said this. He said, Surely God is due all our worship and praise. That is our created purpose, to praise God. Isaiah 43, 1-7 says, But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you, O Israel, the one who formed you, says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Jump to verse 6. I will say to the north and the south, Bring my sons and daughters back to Israel from the distant corners of the earth. Bring all of them, uh, bring all of all who claim me as their God, for I have made them my glory. Bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them my glory. It was I who created them. And what he's saying is that God is due all glory, all power, all honor, all praise, all of it belongs to him, and he is due infinite praise and worship. This isn't God being arrogant, saying, I want more praise, give it to me. If I was saying that, that would be pure arrogance. That would be sin. But God is holy. God is just. God is perfect. And God is rightfully due all honour, praise and glory. And due as much honour, praise and glory as he can get. And here's the thought. If man was on his own... There is one man praising God. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. But if we, as a body of people, are praising God, there is more praise to God in that. And now, there's a wonderful thing that happens when, as a body of people, we come together and praise God, is that the praise stirs praise and increased in praise. And I believe what this man is, has said, what this preacher is saying is true, that actually part of it not being good that man is alone is because God is due all the possible praise that he can get. And if there's only one man, there's a limited amount of praise. There's another point to, to throw in this mix as, as well. When we look at, 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 at God, what did he say? He said that, that he would create mankind in his own image. Genesis 1, 26 says this, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our own image to be like us. They will reign over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and the livestock and all the wild animals and the earth and the smaller the animals and they that scurry along the ground. Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. What is God like? God is three in one. God is community, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes, we know God is not, he is one, and Scripture says he's one, but God is Trinity as well. Again, very difficult to, to grasp and, and to, to fully understand, but we take it by faith. God is a community, a perfect community. And as a perfect community, he is due all the praise and honour and glory. And we are made in his image. And if we are made in the image of a God who lives in perfect community then actually, we too should be in community. Yes, it's right for us to worship on our own. It's absolutely right for us to worship on our own. It's imperative that we worship on our own. To not worship on our own is depriving God of what is rightly His. But apart from that, we get so blessed when we worship God on our own. But it is also vitally important that we worship God together as community. It is what we were made for. It is part of our created purpose. 
when we come together, when we meet together, our praise. And we, we, we mustn't just assume that praise is singing. Praise is worship that comes in the quiet as well as in the verbal. It is loud, it is vibrant, it is exuberant, it is quiet, it is deep. Praise in all its various different forms is wonderful. And all of that can be inspired and encouraged by doing it in community. And as I said, that's part of what we're created for. I believe that what God is, is, is saying to us is that he wants us to be a worshipping community. It is part of our created purpose to worship God. We are glorifying God. We, we, sinful me, gets to glorify God. That's amazing. God wants us to press into Him. He wants us to worship Him. Yes, we do that on our own, but we need to do it together. And I believe that as we do that, God will open up to us what His next step for us to do is. Both as a church and as individuals, He will open it up to us. Why? Because we're close to Him because we're worshipping him, because we are fulfilling our created purpose. But there is more. There is more. There's a few more things that I want to bring, encouragements that I want to bring to in, inspire us. A few more things to bring that I believe will, that will cause us to be stirred, to find ways to meet together any way we can, any way that's right. And again, hear me, I'm not saying break the rules. I'm not saying we should go against what the, what the advice is, but I'm saying we should look for ways that God is opening doors to us. We should look for means and ways that we can meet together and things that we can do. And things like WhatsApp and Zoom and, 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 and those sorts of things, and even just on the telephone to one another, these are all things that we can use to continue to worship God together. There are no rules in this. I don't, I, this is, or rather, this isn't about there being rules. This is about us being inspired and the blessings of God flowing. And in that context, there's just a couple more, a few more points that I want to make, just a few more things I want to point to to inspire us. First of all, we are one body. Romans 12, 4 and 5. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. Together, we are Christ's body. And I think that's really important because again, it brings us back to this fact that as human beings, we're created to be in community. Together, we are Christ's body. I am not Christ's body, but I am part of Christ's body. I have a role to play. My role is important. My role has been given to me by God, and my role was created for my particular personality and nature and who I am, because that's the work of God in my life and the work of the Holy Spirit in my life and in your life. You have a role to play. Part of this body you and I have a role to play. 1 Corinthians 12, 18 to 21. But our bodies have many parts and God has put each part just where he wants it. You and I, he's put us right where he wants it. So, I'm sorry to say, but God wants me here right now. <laughs> and I know I can be a pain and I can be... But God wants me here right now because he's put me here. God's put you here right now. You're in the place God wants you. That means God has something for you to do. And all we have to do is listen. Press into God and listen to find out what he wants us to do. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. We are the body. Part of the reason why meeting together is important is because we are the body. If my arm said, I don't want to be, I don't actually don't want to be, I don't want to be joined to you at the moment. I want to be off doing my own thing for a little bit. I might come back later on, but I just want to disappear and, and have a little bit of fun. 
I would be struggling because it would be pretty painful and my hand would struggle because it would end up dying. And it's the same sort of thing. That may sound a bit sort of bit strong, but it's true in, in, in the church. If we cut ourselves off, if we take ourselves off thinking, no, I, I can exist on my own. I don't need others. I don't need anything else. What happens is we do end up dying slowly inside. And, and it, it, even when we press into God. Now, if God takes us somewhere, and we happen to be on our own. I think that's a different thing altogether. Because actually, what I and, and what I've experienced, and this happened with my father when he went off to Africa. He went off to Nigeria back in 1964. And when he left, he had no one to go to. As far as he was concerned, he was going completely on his own. And what happened was, on the plane flying over to Nigeria, he sat next to a lady. It turns out that this lady happened to be a Christian. And my father got in conversation with her, and that lady introduced her to a wonderful missionary lady called Miss Dick, who became a lifelong friend and was a wonderful, wonderful Christian, who introduced my father to another wonderful man called Pastor Elton, who became a real challenge in our lives and a real blessing. You see, even though my father stepped out on his own, God did not leave him on his own. And again, we are part of the body. That's why we need one another. And that is why I believe we are to be together. We are to meet. Here's another thought that, 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 that I, I discovered. And again, I hadn't really thought about this much, but then again, it, it, it sort of slowly just really blessed me. Ephesians 5, 20, uh, 31 to 32. As the scripture says, a man leaves his father and his mother and is joined to his wife, and the two... Are united into one. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way that Christ and the church are one. We meet. Meeting is important because we are part of the bride. Think about this. I am not the bride. I am part of the bride. I need you. Together we are part of the bride. Isaiah 54, 5, For your creator will be your husband. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. He is your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of all the earth. Jesus is working. His Holy Spirit is working in us as the, as the bride of Christ so that one day as the bride, His church will stand before Him and you and I are part of that church. And when we stand in glory, we will be together. If we're taking ourselves away from meeting together now, we're going to find it really hard when we get in glory because we're going to spend eternity with the rest of the bride of Christ. We are the bride. And there's another part as well, another thing that comes out from, from this. There's another promise found in Matthew 18.20. It talks in there, the Bible talks about Christ perfecting it, Christ laying down his life for his bride, for the church. And then in this one, he's talking in Matthew 18.20, and he says, for where two or three are gathered together uh, as my followers, I am there amongst them. Meeting together... Jesus has promised that he will be amongst us. His Holy Spirit will turn up. And we can be doing Zoom and the Holy Spirit can turn up. We've heard of people getting saved over Zoom. The power of God through a lens, through a camera, through the internet has touched the lives of from one person to another by the Holy Spirit and they've come to know Christ through Zoom. We can worship together over Zoom. Yes, we may not be playing the instruments, but we're listening to anointed ministry that's coming off of the internet. And we're listening to those songs together. And our hearts are being stirred by the Holy Spirit together. And as we sit and as we worship together, we are meeting together. And it's part of that. And God has promised that He will turn up. God has turned up this morning. He will turn up. Yes, we are instructed to worship privately. We are instructed to pray privately. We are encouraged to have our own personal private walk with God. But when it comes to seeing the Savior um, in his fullest, it is not good that man should be alone.
It is part of our created being. There's just a couple of other ones. I'm not going to go into great detail on these, but there's a couple of other thoughts that I had. First of all, when we come together as the body, we illustrate the gospel. Do you know, the gospel is not just about what we, what we preach, but it's what we live. It's not just what we say, but it's how we are, how we function together. And when we come together, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. When we come together, when we meet together, we proclaim the gospel in how we meet, in how we share, and in how we care one for another. And can I say that I want to just encourage you, church. You know, we don't do, you don't do bad at caring from one another. And God wants more of that. And that is a testimony that we can carry. Because when we preach the gospel, we need not only words, we need actions. People need to see our lives to see that it's real. Here's another thought. When we come together, when we meet, we disciple one another. Hebrews 10, 24-25 Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do. Acts of good works. That's encouraging. That's pastoring. That's caring for. That's discipling each one. As we see each other. As we see God using different ones amongst us. As we share our experience of God. It stirs us. In conclusion, let me just share a story which I found really powerful and I found really quite challenging. The story is told of a famous Baptist minister from the 19th century. He visited a member of his congregation who had gradually stopped coming to church and he, he wanted to see the pastor. He asked the pastor to come and see him because he was actually feeling rather dry. It was a cold day. The two sat down in silence for some time around the coal fire that was burning in the living room. And at last, the minister, saying nothing, simply leant forward, took the tongs from beside the fire, and picked up a large, bright piece of coal out of the fire and placed it on the stone hearth in front of the fire by itself. The two just sat there and watched the coals and watched this coal that was put on the hearth. And as they watched, the colour faded, and it just got cold, and it got black, and it just turned back into a black lump of coal. The fire had gone out. The pastor then picked up the coal, put it back into the middle of the fire, and within seconds it was a blazing, a blazing hot coal again, with fire orange and red light coming out of it. So why do we meet? Why is it so important? It's our created purpose. We meet to worship God together because together we bring glory to God and we increase the glory and the honour and the praise that is brought to Him. We meet together because we're created in the image of God. We're created to be in community. We meet together because we are one body and we all have a part to play. We meet together because we are part of the bride and we're destined for God's glory. We meet together because it's an illustration of the gospel. And we meet together because we disciple one another. And there are many more. There are so many good reasons why we meet together. I'm not pointing any fingers at anyone because I've been there. I've struggled. I've struggled to come sometimes. I felt so tired or whatever. And I just, I'm, I, I've just been challenged by God through this to think again about why we meet and to allow this to stir my passion and my desire to meet.
We meet together because like the coal, we need one another. So let us find ways to meet together any way we can and let us take every possible opportunity. Father, I just pray that that be true for every single one of us, that we will look for every opportunity to meet together and to be your children, to honour you and to glorify you. In your name, thank you, Father. Amen. The Lord bless you. Have a good day.